Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another uh, video on the most common mistakes in Adalo. Um, I coach uh, about 70 people now, or have coached about 70 people now. Um, and so this video series is really just about some of the most common issues and common mistakes that I've seen. Um, I've seen a lot of different uh, apps, uh, a lot of different things that people have done. Um, and these are just some of the more common issues. Um, and this one is centered around relationships uh, between collections. So um, a lot of times people will mistake, a lot of times they'll get to this, you know, this screen right here. Uh, if I can get to my colors here. Um, they'll get to this screen, and this is this really trips them up, actually. Um, but uh, And especially um, if you don't understand kind of how relationships work, um, there's two, well, really, I guess maybe three things to keep in mind with relationships. Um, the first one is that when you create a relationship, it creates a recipe field. And what that means is uh, whatever two collections I'm in a relationship with, it will create a property in both of those collections. Okay, so uh, for instance, if I have a, a collection of products and each of those products can have a different color that the that the uh, user can pick from, right? Uh, so a color uh, can be assigned to multiple products, right? Because I can have shoes that are brown and I can have pillows that are brown, right? Um, but a product uh, may only belong to one color, uh, but you may also have products that belong to multiple colors, right? Um, for instance, I can have pillows that are in brown, red, green, blue, and I can have shoes that are in brown, red, green, blue, right? So um, it's not going to be this one, and a lot of this is just going through these one by one and making sure that the logic makes sense. Um, so in this case, a product can have multiple colors, right? Uh, if I'm looking at a product catalog, I can pick from multiple colors. And if I'm using a database of uh, colors that exist, right, common colors like brown, yellow, black, blue, beige, white, all that good stuff, um, then those colors can be linked to multiple products. So more than likely, it's going to be this one right here. So I'll just choose this one. Um, and each product can have that. Uh, let's go do the same thing for sizes, right? Um, products can have sizes. Um, so a size can have multiple products, right? I can have a large t-shirt, but I can also have large pants, right? Um, and also a, a size, right? Uh, large can have multiple products, right? So that, per that particular size, large, can apply to, you know, pants, t-shirts, whatever. Um, so again, this, this one right here, and again, this changes based on what app is doing, right? Maybe you're dealing with menu items or something like that, um, and you need small, medium, large, right? There's different contexts here, right? Um, but the, that first principle here is uh, I've created these relationships here, but if I click on these other collections like size, you'll notice that now it is automatically created a reciprocal field here for the products that are linked to that. Um, and a lot of people don't notice that you've got a multiple document symbol here. Um, and on the size, that means that there are multiple products tied to a single size. See how the, the icon here has multiple documents in it. Um, and if I click on colors, uh, you'll see that it also has that. And then if I click on products, it also has the these multiple documents here. Okay. Now let's say that I wanted to um, create a a collection called order items, so that when a person picks a product, it creates an order item uh, that is specific to their order. Right. So let me just go ahead and create an order items collection here. Order items and uh, there are going to be a couple of different things here, uh, a couple of different properties here. So an order item is going to have a relationship to a product. And this is where, again, we kind of have to think about this, right, where um, all I'm doing is basically creating a, uh, a duplicate of a product uh, for this particular order, right? So a product can have multiple order items. Uh, that is true, right, because 
multiple people can buy the same product. You can think of order items as like pieces of stock or pieces of inventory of that product. Right? It's the same product, it's just multiples of the same thing. Um, but an order item belongs to one product, right? And uh, a piece of inventory can only ever be one product. I can't, uh, you know, tennis shoes can't also be a rubber chicken, right? <laughs> so um, it's actually going to be this first one right here. Okay, so the order item is tied to a product, and now you'll see that this little icon here is now a single document telling us that each order item is tied to one product only. Okay, um, and then if I go back up here to this products collection, uh, again, you can see that because it's a one-to-many, we have this, dupe, this multiple document symbol here. Okay. Um, and this comes into play, especially when you're doing things like drop downs, right? So if I'm wanting to create an order item for this product that I'm looking at, um, a lot of people will run into issues when they go to create it, right? They'll create like maybe a form or something like that. They'll say, okay, I want to, you know, create an order item and the product that's tied to it, I want it to be the current product, right, whichever one I'm looking at. Um, and let's go ahead and actually tie the size and the color to this as well so that we can choose. Uh, so let's tie a size and color. And again, this is where we're going to choose the, the right number of relationships, right? So each order item, I can really only order it in one color, right, at a time. Now I can add multiples to my cart, but I can only ever add one color to my cart at a time. It's the same way as if you were in a store and you were picking up black shoes and putting it in your cart. Uh, then you have to move a little bit and pick up maybe the white shoes and put them in your cart, right? Uh, same kind of principle there. So a color, um, a color can have multiple order items and an order item belongs to one color. Okay, so we're selecting a color for the item that we're purchasing. And let's, we also need a way to purchase the size for our, uh, for our item that we're purchasing. Okay, and it's also going to be this first one. Uh, and I guess the third and final thing about relationships is that um, this menu changes based on where you're adding the relationship from, right? So if I'm adding it from the order items collection, then uh, it's going to be the first one, right? But you'll notice that if I actually go to the uh, size collection, right, and add it from the order item side, you'll notice that it's actually going to be the second one here, right? An order item can only have one size. So this changes based on where you're adding the relationship from, which collection you're adding it from. And either way will get you to the same result. Uh, you just have to keep that in mind, right? So if I go back to my order items, I have, when I'm purchasing an order item, I can select a single size, I can select a single color, and I can select a single product, right? And just for grins and giggles, let's stick this number in here as well. So what is the quantity of the item that we want, right? So now here, we can add the color being this color select, right, which I think is select 2, I think, and the size is going to be our size select, which I think is select 1, I should normally name those, and then the quantity is going to be, you know, whatever the person puts in to the input there. Um, oftentimes, if these relationships are wrong, uh, for instance, if I have these set up incorrectly, like instead of a single size, they can pick multiple sizes, Let's just go ahead and do that very quickly, right? So if you have this set incorrectly, um, where an order item can have multiple sizes, that's not really true. Uh, when you go to create the order item, right, uh, see how it has this field down here? It won't actually let me select anything in this, uh, in this sizes uh, option here. See how there's no... Uh, 
it doesn't give me an option to select what's whatever the person chooses, right? It just keeps giving me like this endless loop of stuff, right? Um, and this frustrates a lot of people. But if this happens, it's typically because, um, you know, it won't let you select something. It's typically because your relationship is wrong, right? We've got a single select field here. The user can only select one size for this product, okay? So if I go back to my relationship, an order item can't have multiple sizes. I can only order one size at a time, right? So let's just delete this, and we'll add our size back. So a size can have an order item belongs to one size, right? And now you'll see that we can actually add that size back. Okay, so our form inputs are select. If I just click on the select, anytime you see those little this little hand icon, that means that you can actually select whatever it is that you're hovering over. Okay, so we've got our current product, current color, whatever they select in this option, the quantity, and then the selected size there. Um, I don't think I actually put in any sizes, so we probably won't be able to preview that, but let's just check this out and you can see. All right, so I've got some uh, objects here. Let's go for the uh, dog toy. And yeah, I, like I said, I don't have any sizes in the database, so we won't be able to select that. But let's go ahead and select the color is bruh. And we're going to order four of them. OK, and let's check our database really quick. So we've got one record there. And so the color is bruh. The product is the dog toy. We ordered four of them, and if I had put some sizes in, uh, had remembered to do that, we would be able to select a size here as well. Okay, uh, now that was a little bit long. Hopefully that was helpful for you in explaining a little bit more about how relationships work and how to set them up in your database.